What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another film breakdown. Today, we are going to be looking at the Houston Texans offensive tackles Laramie Tunsil and Titus Howard versus the Los Angeles Chargers pass rushers Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. This was a really great idea, and shout out to Austin Tucker for recommending it. I really love our tackle duo with Tunsil and Titus, and I think in three, maybe four years, we're going to have the top tackle duo in the league, no doubt. Tunsil is already the best left tackle in the game, in my opinion, and Titus' ceiling is super high. So this week three matchup against Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram is really a great measuring stick to see how the two would perform. Because Bosa is undoubtedly a top 10 pass rusher in the NFL, and Ingram has always been super underrated and deserves more respect himself. This was a fun matchup to break down, and if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now, let's break down the film between the Texans offensive tackles and the Chargers pass rushers, because the film don't lie. So I'm going to structure this video a little bit differently than I normally do, but I'm going to talk about the players in order of who I think played the best to who I think played the worst. And the player who I think played the best throughout the entire game is Laramie Tunsil. You know, matched up against Joey Bosa for most of the day, he did his job. He held him to a pretty pedestrian performance for how good Bosa is. And the one thing that really stood out to me is how aggressive Tunsil was playing this. There were pass sets throughout the day where he would look and try and punch Bosa as quickly as possible and get into his chest. Because Bosa, he really thrives on being able to build up his speed and translate that to power and to his other finesse moves and counters inside and stuff like that. And so Tunsil knew that and he never wanted him to be able to get a running start, get good momentum and good rhythm into his pass rushing moves because tackles nowadays, they rarely ever do quick sets like these and be aggressive and try and punch you first like that. But Tunsil loves to take aggressive sets and I made a video about him. So if you haven't checked that one out, I really appreciate that. It's a great one. And so most tackles, like I said, what they're taught to do is their first step backwards from their kick step. That's supposed to be at roughly a 45 degree angle because that gives you the optimal angle to gain depth, but also be at a good range where you can still punch them and not let them build up too much speed, like I said. And so that's what most coaches will teach. That's what, that's what most offensive tackles will do. However, like I mentioned, Tunsil is very different and he'll take an aggressive kick step, usually at roughly like this angle, but here against Bosa, he took it to an extreme. He even went forward to attack him. Tunsil getting his hands into Bosa's chest is what completely nullifies and shuts down this play because he's just way too strong for Bosa. Like I said, this kick step is very aggressive and it's very risky. You don't see this very often in the NFL at all. It's a college thing mainly. Because when you're this aggressive, you're going this far out of the play. Yeah, you create a lot of space between the pass rusher and the quarterback, but you're also basically left out on an island. And it's very hard for you to recover if you do get beat. However, Tunsil is so good. He's so strong in his hands that most of the time he just locks people out. And if he does get beat, he has the foot speed to recover that not many tackles do. And so Tunsil did well against their best pass rusher, but he also shut down Melvin Ingram. He does a really great job to anchor against this bull rush here and give Deshaun Watson just such a clean pocket from that left side. I love the technique out of Tunsil. He's a strong dude. And so when Ingram tries to run down the middle of him, he plays low, he absorbs the blow and he gives up ground very slowly, but still not allowing a pressure. And so I'll get into some final stats and tracking stuff that I did for Tunsil after the film, but let's get into the next best player from that game and that really was Joey Bosa he finished with three pressures a tackle for loss and half a sack and for any other pass rusher that would be a hell of a game but it's Joey Bosa we're talking about and this is kind of just like an average day for him or slightly below average if we're being honest so while I said before that Tunsil did well against Bosa, he didn't completely shut him out. And we're going to look at the pressures first. So his first one came early in the game and the pressure actually helped result into kind of a backwards throw fumble where the Chargers got the ball in our territory. So in terms of impact, you can't get much more impactful than that type of pressure forcing a turnover. So breaking down the move, Bosa does really good to start outside on his rush. And then what he does is he jumps inside. He plants off his outside foot jumping inside and uses a two-hand swipe to swipe away Laramie Tunsil's hands, and somehow he's able to slither his way in between Tunsil and Sharpen, get into the backfield, and force an errant throw. And this is exactly what I was talking about before with how Tunsil would try and get out to him early, 
and aggressively and stop him in his tracks on here it was early in the game and so he wasn't doing that just yet and so that allows bosa to build up his speed which is deceivingly effective and then able to jump inside like that and things just happen too quickly for Tunsil to be able to react and he got him good and Bosa's second pressure came from the exact same type of move. You can see Tunsil, he takes a little bit more of an aggressive kick set this time. You see how it's more horizontal instead of going vertically, diagonally backwards. And yet it's still not enough. Bosa's move is just so smooth. He times his two-hand swipe really well and gets to Deshaun quickly. And you can really see how this move clearly gave Tunsil trouble. And that's what made him go to those extremes where he has to even go forward and punch Bosa first. Because he could not allow him to build up speed, get downhill, and use that same move on him over and over again. So I love the adjustment out of Tunsil to be able to lock that down later throughout the game. But back to Bosa here and his third pressure came against Titus Howard. He's going to get chipped by the tight end, but it doesn't matter. He's able to still win to the outside, force Watson to step up into pressure and somehow he miraculously stays alive. But you still got to count this as a pressure for Bosa. And I love the move that he puts on Titus Howard here. He uses a club swipe here to club away Titus's outside hand so that he never has a chance to get hands on Bosa because, because Titus has long arms and that's something that's able to disrupt Bosa. He just doesn't have enough bend to finish off the sack against Watson. Titus does a decent job to push him out of the way again with that said length. But Bosa wouldn't be shut out from the stat sheet. He would eventually get his sack and just from being relentless in his pursuit of Watson. And on this play, you're going to see Bosa's going to use that same club move to get past Titus, but then Duke Johnson's there to help him, and to get rid of Duke Johnson, he's going to rip underneath him, shooting his inside arm underneath Duke Johnson and trying to lock him out like that, and that gets him off of Bosa, and from the interior pressure, Watson's not able to step up in the pocket, so eventually he gets brought down to the ground. Now Bosa also made an impact in the running game, not allowing Laramie Tunsil to reach block him, shedding the block and making the tackle for loss against Carlos Hyde. Now his other tackle on the day came when he was unblocked, and he's just supposed to be disciplined here for when the running back cuts back, he's in position, and he can shut it down. So good job by him. Now the next best player that we're going to talk about is Titus Howard, and call me a Texans homer if you want, but Titus actually did very well in this game. He only allowed two pressures, and as a rookie tackle going up against two of the better pass rushers in the NFL, that's really good. And he won a lot throughout the day. It might have been ugly on some of the reps, but he still did his job and didn't allow any sacks or hits on Watson. His length was a huge deterrent to Bosa and Ingram all day long. And I want to break down this play where we got the touchdown and he just shuts down Melvin Ingram right here. Good hand placement to get right into his chest. He extends out his arms, locking him out, using his length to his advantage so that Ingram can't disengage and get off the block. And I really like his feet. It's nothing crazy here, but as Ingram goes to the right, Titus follows him, showing good feet and mirroring skills. Titus also showed good run blocking technique against Bosa here. He gets into his chest, extends out, and runs his feet, pushing him out of the play. And yeah, the run doesn't go his direction, but that's still a good job by Titus. Now, we've talked about everyone except for one man, and that would be Melvin Ingram. And out of the four, I really think that he played the worst. He had five tackles throughout the day, but they just weren't very meaningful. This one, Deshaun Watson still gets the first down. And then this one, this was probably his best one of the day, where Carlos Hyde just keeps bouncing that run, and he's there to clean it up for a no gain. This next one where he gets shut down by Laramie Tunsil and he's just not really much going for him here. Eventually he kind of has a pressure but they didn't register him for one on that one and then he gets in on the tackle there at the end which they counted for him. And then on this one like this is just like the definition of a very not impactful tackle whatsoever. I mean good effort for him for chasing down this play but this was still a 10 yard gain. Finally his fifth one of the day where he chases Deshaun Watson out of the pocket, and I guess this one was good too. He still got a four-yard gain, but good job by Ingram. Now, on top of those tackles, Ingram did have a hit and a pressure, but look at this hit. Like, he just comes completely unblocked. There's no one he had to beat, and yeah, he forced, he helped force an incompletion, but I mean, any player you plug in there is gonna make that same play. But his pressure was nice. He beats Titus to the outside here with not really much of a move there, but just with his pure athleticism, and then, oh wait, that pressure was all for nothing because Deshaun escapes it and drops a 53-yard touchdown so that really wasn't for anything but you still have to give him credit so now that we've broken down the film we can use some of the stats to help add context and add on to what we've already been thinking about due to the film so there were 34 pass reps in total and on seven of those bosa and ingram were chipped when the texans chipped their blockers they made sure to chip both sides which isn't always the case but that's going to take the number of pass reps down to 27 and so on those 27 reps, Bosa played 23 of them, finishing with half a sack, three pressures, and one roughing the passer penalty. 
So 4 out of 23, that success rate, leads to a pass rush productivity of 17%. Not great, but not awful either. Now, Ingram, he played 25 of those 27 reps, but he lined up on the inside 5 of those times, and so he only had 20 pass rush reps against either Tunsil or Titus. Now on those 20 reps, he had 2 pressures, and although he did have a hit, he was completely unblocked during that hit. So that pass rush productivity is pretty damn awful at just 10%. Now looking at that, it's pretty easy to say that Tunsil and Titus did their job. I mean, against Bosa, they had a success rate of 83%, and against Ingram, it was 90%, and that's on their one-on-one -on -one pass rushing opportunities. So the Texans tackle duo did a really damn good job that game. The worst that they allowed was that one sack, and if that's all you're giving up against Bosa and Ingram, that's a big time win. So with that said, let's make it official. My final verdict of who won this matchup is... Laramie Tunsil and Titus Howard. I think it's easy to see, even removing my Texans bias, the film don't lie. And the film showed that Tunsil and Titus played really well. Were they perfect? Nah, but the stats help solidify how well they did in limiting Bosa to a slightly below average day and Ingram to, you know, a pretty poor day. So that's going to do it for my Tunsil and Titus versus Bosa and Ingram film breakdown. It was great to see our tackles perform so well in only week 3, and it was really Titus' first official start at right tackle, which I honestly completely forgot until now, but that should make his performance even more impressive. So I'm really excited with the young tackle duo we got, and if you are too, and enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you. And the question of the day is gonna be, do you agree with me and think the Texans won this matchup? Or was I being a little bit too biased to our guys? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. We've got a great website where I write about more Texans related stuff and a weekly podcast on all your typical platforms. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film, don't lie.